The very first thing that I normally have people do, and this it sounds very, very simple, but I have them start with water because beyond we've heard all the time that we are, you know, 75% or whatever the around about percent water, um, our bodies are composed of, are comprised of that. So starting there and many of the t many of times people, their cravings for those types of things comes because they're full of toxins, <laughs> right? So like if you're full of toxins, it's almost like like attracts like. Does that make sense? So if you're full of toxins, your body's going to crave more of that. So if you can flush those out and kind of almost like washing like a clean palate, like if you're going to wash a dish, right? Like if you ate something crazy on a dish and you're like, oh, I need to use this dish for something else, wash the dish off, it's ready for something else. Kind of like it's really that simple. Like So I, I really always start people because you got to cleanse yourself out because then from that place, you can say, now I'm making a conscious choice about what to start with. And I'm a fan of whole foods. So people are always like, supplements, what should I take, or whatever. Whole foods. We have access to everything we need. Nothing that we need to survive needs to be made in a lab. It just doesn't. <laughs> like, I believe in food as medicine for everything, from mental and emotional to even physical ailments. I believe in that. And so, again, I always start with them. I always start with the mind because the first thing people say is, "But I love fill in the blank." whatever their processed food is that they love. And why? So when we talk about this disease runs in my family, does it? Or does the habits that you perpetuate, do those run in your family and then create the disease circumstance? So we have to begin to change the conversation around, so water is the first step, but also the conversation. And this may not be a very practical approach, but it works. Uh, we have to change the conversation around it because we say things like, this is my treat or this is my comfort food. And I'm like, okay, is it comforting for you to be overweight, having disease, having ailments in your joints because of these things? Like, is that comforting? And if these are the foods that are causing you to be in that state, why are you calling that a comfort food? It's not comforting. It's making you very uncomfortable, as a matter of fact. So if we can change our language around it and stop saying that it's a treat, it's not a treat for you to go and sabotage all the work that you've been doing to get to whatever your goal may be as far as your health is concerned. So if we can start to change our mind about what we're doing and tell ourselves the truth about what's actually happening, it becomes harder and harder to do. If I say to myself every time I eat a red hot Cheeto that I'm eating you know, red dye number, whatever, that is doing X, Y, Z poison to my body and I'm just going to keep eating it? Probably not. Not consciously, not, not um, without some kind of, I don't know, maybe not guilt, but some type of conviction about what I'm doing to myself. Because then it becomes a question of if you are continuing to do that when you know what it's doing, what kind of self-hate do we have going on? It literally becomes like a, a deep thing. And when you start asking people these questions and saying, like, why do you not do the things that you know are going to make your quality of life better? What is it that's making you think that these other things are more important than improving your quality of life and your longevity for your children, for your grandchildren, for your purpose? You serve a greater purpose and you have things that you want to do in this life, but you're not taking care of your physical body in the way that will allow you to be here to execute what it is that you're created to do. Why? And then they're just like, I don't know. And it, it's a real question. Like, what is it that's stopping you from doing what it takes to have a better quality of life? Why is McDonald's more important that, than that? Why is checking your email 10,000 times a day and that's telling you you don't have time to work out, why is that more important than creating an internal environment where you can feel good about the life you live? And if we can change the conversation and start having people 
tell the truth about their lives and the habits that they have, it's going to become increasingly harder to keep on with those kinds of habits. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.